How do I hurt myself? How do I hurt myself? How do I hurt myself? Suppose, suppose you made a nice breakfast for your husband in the morning. Okay? And while you were preparing it, you had this beautiful scene on the screen of your mind that when they're going to have this, I'm going to get like, you know, lots and lots and lots of them. And there they are on the table, phone in one hand, all ready to leave, quickly having their breakfast, and you're waiting. Huh? Huh? What? And then, then finally we had to ask for it. So how was the breakfast? It's good. Only good? No, it was nice. But you know what? The one my mummy used to make in India no? when I was a child, it's that taste does not come exactly like that. That's it. I had expected. And what I got was, and at that moment, they said what was the truth for them. Were they wrong? Were they wrong? Were they wrong? Acha, you're actually saying they were not wrong. See, when we come in a gathering like this, how our responses change. They were not wrong. Very good. They said what was truth for them. Their words do not create the hurt for me. Now what I say to myself after that. I left my country and came here for him. 40 years I have been living away from my family. I was not even interested in cooking. I learned how to cook. I did everything. And this is what I get to hear after 40 years. No one loves me. No one respects me. No one cares for me. Meri to koi value nahi hai. And while creating all this conversation that I'm creating, because every line is now going to create pain. Every line is now going to create pain. But while I'm creating that pain, I believe they are the cause of my hurt. They said one line, which was the truth. I said 20 lines to myself after that. And then I can continue saying those lines to myself throughout the day. And then after saying those lines, my mind is so heavy, I say I need to talk to somebody to feel better now. And so I will call up my sister or my friend or my mummy, thinking that, you know, I'm going to feel a little better after talking to them. And then I say to them, do you know what he said today? And they're going to say, leave it, all husbands are like this. And then together the two of us create 30, 40, 50 more negative lines. And throughout all that pain, we are still saying, they hurt me. This is the illusion. This is the only awareness we need today. That who created my hurt? If at that time when they had said, yeah, it's nice, but what my mother cooked used to be better, did I have another response? Did I have another response? What could have been my response? Hanji? I can learn from her. Good. <laughs> Any other response? Hanji? I will do better. Very good. Very good. Brother says, make your own breakfast. Self-respect. I did my I did my best and respect that you could like something more than what I have done my best. That's it. That's it. I am happy. They are happy. We are happy. And the world is beautiful. It may be for a very, very insignificant situation like this, but the equation applies to every situation of our life. And every means every situation of our life. The world does not create our emotions. Our emotions create our world. Energy is not flowing from outside in. Energy is flowing from inside out. And only when we change this one belief system will we be able to be calm and stable 
always not dependent on people and situations look at a situation like a family member going through a health crisis what does the person need from us apart from physical care what do they need from us what do they need from us but we live with them 24 by 7 creating pain fear worry is that healing energy for somebody is that healing energy from someone no look at a situation where where a family member has left their body and moved on to their journey in life which is one of the toughest situations anyone can go through what kind of feelings and emotions are needed at that time what's the energy we need to create a very very close relationship has left the body moved on to their journey in life what does the soul need from us that time what do they need from us so we're going to look at the most insignificant situation as breakfast not the way my way to the toughest situation in my life a family member leaves what's the feeling and state of mind needed at that time we all meet together at that time and we say pray for them what is the meaning that they should they should rest in peace which means wherever they are they should be in peace they will be in peace only and only if we send peaceful vibrations from here so just by me saying and praying for them to be in peace they cannot be in peace but if i am in peace here i am stable i am calm i'm praying and meditating for them and sending them powerful vibrations then the soul will receive my vibrations and be in peace where they are but if i will be here and keep creating thoughts like how could you go away i cannot live without you come back this is not fair why did you do this to me and i radiate all those vibrations to them can that soul be in peace can the soul be in peace no so in any situation of life the response needed from us is to be calm and stable when a soul leaves the body and they enter the womb of the mother a soul in the womb of the mother goes through a lot of emotions and that's why an expecting mother goes through emotional ups and downs the emotional ups and downs the expecting mother goes through is because of the emotional ups and downs of the soul in the womb who's going through it and the soul in the womb is going through the emotional ups and downs depending on the emotional ups and downs the family is sending to them they were our relationship we were connected to them our thoughts and feelings are reaching them they are not yet connected to the present family they are receiving all our energy and every moment we are sending pain to them we are creating pain for ourselves creating pain for the family left behind and most important sending pain to them and if we understand this then it requires only one thought to change ourselves only one thought i met a sister last month at mount abu she had come from america and she just met me backstage and she said i want to share my experience with you and she said three years back I saw the awakening program just happened to come across it and the episode that day was about being stable and calm when someone leaves the body when someone dies in your family because your pain is reaching the soul and causing them pain where they are and she said that day I took a decision that if someone goes in my family I will not cry I will remember them with love I will send them power and peace I will not cry for them exactly four days later exactly four days later her 21 year old son died in an accident but the power of a soul you know meeting them shows me what power we have and she said when I heard the news my first thought was I will not allow anyone to send 
pain to my son. And she said, neither am I going to cry, neither am I going to allow anyone else in my house to cry. Everyone will be in silence, pray and meditate for that soul to move across on the journey peacefully. And she did it. And she did it. And today it's been three years. She goes and meets family, she bees with people who have lost somebody and she helps them to be that way. Because that's the power of every individual. That's the power of the human mind. We only need to start using our power. Because when we know the impact of our power, then we will not waste our power in getting disturbed just because somebody did not like my post on social media. The power we have and the reactions we create. Only and only because we're not aware of our power. And that's why the next 24 hours we're going to be aware of our power. Which means use your power. It's a strength we have, we only need to use it in every scene. So which means next 24 hours, the world can be the way it wants to be. Ready? Sure? Certain? And certain of yourself? Yes. Simple? Simple? Be careful with your mind. It's like a little child. If you tell a child, it's not simple but do it then what will happen? When you want to make your child do something, what do you tell your child? What do you tell your child? It's very simple. The child will say, no. Then what do you tell your child? It's very easy. It's very easy. I'm there with you. We're going to succeed. But if you tell your child, it's very difficult. But you try. Let's see what happens tomorrow. Then that child will lose the first scene in the morning. <laughs> The relationship we have with others, the way we appreciate others, empower others, motivate others, we need to do that with ourselves. Empower yourself. Have the right language for yourself. Emotional health of 10 only means my language inside needs to be of the highest vibration. The world may not be nice to me. People may not be nice to me. But if I learn to be nice to myself, which means if my every line inside is right, I'll be happy always. I'll be happy always. But even if the world is perfect and I do not create nice lines inside, I'm not happy. Have you ever met people who have an almost perfect life outside but yet don't seem to be happy? Ever met anybody like that? Yes? Yes? They seem to find something to... And everybody looks at them and says, Kya problem hai? Sab kuch to perfect hai. But they will find something. Why? Because the inner world is not connected to the outer world. Their outer world is perfect and yet they find something wrong to say inside. If that is possible, then even this is possible that the outer world is imperfect. But we speak nice lines to ourselves inside. So now don't say to yourself, try. Don't say to yourself, it's difficult. What will we say to ourselves? Just say it and your vibration will change. What will we say to ourselves? It is. It is. It is. It is simple. Very good. Second line. I am. I am certain I will be able to do it. And then the mind will say, but do you know whom we are meeting tomorrow? Do you know which meeting is lined up tomorrow at 10 o'clock? And tell your mind, I know it. And I am certain. They can say what they want tomorrow. I am certain. All that we need to do is be nice to, be nice to ourselves. We know how to be nice to others. We are very nice to people. If someone has not said a nice word to your friend, you will leave everything, be with them and say, it's okay, let it be, it was her mood, it was her perspective. We know how to change people's moods. How many of you have been able to change somebody else's mood? 
Have you ever been able to do it? Somebody was low and you're able to get them up like that, being able to do it? Yes. So we have the power to be able to change somebody else's mood. Other people have the power to change our mood. So do you think we have the power to change our own mood? Yes, but we're not doing it. That's all. We're not doing it because we did not cultivate a relationship with ourselves. We thought we'll take care of them, they will take care of us. And so when I was not in a very good mood, I called them up and suppose that day they said, I'm sorry, I'm very busy right now, talk. Then what's going to happen? Then I was at five and I go down to four, three, and then I say, every time she calls, I leave everything and I'm there for her. So I expect that the way I am to the world, people will be the same to me. If you have the nature to help people, care for people, share with people, be there for people, is it necessary they will have the same capacity and the nature to be with you? No. And then am I going to be hurt when they don't do it that way? And which means having expectations. Close your eyes, choose one expectation you have from someone. One. Hmm? Choose one expectation you have from someone. And now ask yourself if they do not fulfill this expectation tomorrow. How am I going to be? Who creates the expectation? We. See how the equation goes inside. I expect you to fill in the blank. Second line, I will be happy when you meet my expectation. Third, I am upset when you don't live up to my expectation. And four, you are the cause of my pain. All this was done without asking them if they were interested in fulfilling what I wanted them to do. And then we sit back and say, can I not even have this much expectation from people? No, I cannot. No, I cannot because I do not know their capacity. I come to your place for dinner today, you prepare a five course meal for me. That's your capacity. That does not mean that when you come to my place next week, I will be able to do the same. And so you come to my place at six o'clock in the evening and I say, I have my dinner early and I'm finished. And I have nothing to offer. And I don't even plan to go into the kitchen and cook one quick one for you. No. Will you get hurt? Will you get hurt? And then your mind is going to rewind all the meals you have. And then your mind will start bargaining. If she could not prepare five items, at least four, at least three, at least two, at least one, at least one cup of tea, do I not even deserve this much from her? And then, next month I come to your place again. This is where we start losing our inner power. Cooking a good meal is your quality, it's your capacity. It could be as simple as a meal, it could be to bigger things that we're ready to do for people. What we do for people is our quality, it's our capacity, it's our sanskar. A little mistake we make is we expect they will have the same one. And then when they don't have the same one, we get hurt. And the biggest risk is next time we give up our quality. You like to call up people on their birthdays, you call them up. Then on your birthday you check how many of them called you that day. And if they did not call you that day, next year somebody says, Pada, today is her birthday. It's okay, why do I need to call? Did she call me? No. Even in simple things like this, we are checking and only returning to people their energies. Calling up somebody on the birthday is your quality. Just call up, we're using your quality. Because when you use your quality, your quality will go on increasing. Inner power will go on increasing. But if we give up our qualities just because the other person doesn't have the same, then our quality starts. 
our value means it's our value always and with everyone not only with those who have the same value and that's the power to be able to respond out of our choice irrespective of how they behave expectations create pain and even if you had to have an expectation, then you need to first check what is their capacity. Had you checked from me whether I like cooking, then you will not be disappointed if I don't cook. But if you expect I will just be the way you were to me, then disappointment is destiny. Then it's destiny. And in that moment, I will not be able to stop my mind from getting hurt and disturbed because I expected them to be my way so every day choose your expectation and then gently shift it from the side of expectation to to which side shifting from expectation to to accepting people the way they are and most important being your way with them not for their sake all this is not happening for their sake all this is happening for because we kept giving up our qualities before because we kept reacting that's the only reason we were not able to raise our hand on 10 that's the only reason and when we start choosing our response and we start being our way and using our value we are going to be on an emotional health of 10 and which means happy calm and stable always inner power, personal guarantee, let life offer anything. And anything means anything. The world is not in my control, but it is certain that I will respond the right way. That's all that guarantee we need. Because then we are truly there, not just for ourselves, but we are there for our family. Every house needs one powerful soul today. Every house, every family needs one powerful soul who should be able to take care of everybody else. So you need to ask yourself, am I ready to be the one of my house?